Oh my god. This is just the fucking best, isn't it? Hello and welcome to Script Tonight Reacts. I'm Script Tonight. Today we're going to be watching Season 3, Episode 9 of The Expanse. This episode is called Intransigence. I'm in the same outfit, but it is later in the day. I have gone and done things. And um, just had to watch episode nine today. It is quite late here, as you can probably tell from uh, the low level lighting. But the end of episode eight, I knew there was no way on earth I could even attempt to wait to find out what was going on. I still can't quite believe the sharp turn that that episode took. And actually how quickly the show got us there because you know the prior episode had felt quite jarring with the time jump with all this host of new characters the geopolitical situation had completely transformed and obviously all of the characters are used to it but we're just being introduced to it quickly and I, I just kind of felt oh god Christ I feel a bit behind the curve like I need to catch up to where they are and I think that was actually excellently done because it had me so busy focusing just on who was where and what their names were and everything else i actually wasn't thinking so much about how all of these different places and people were going to knit together like the melba storyline just seemed completely separate even geographically i had her you know way far away so it was really crazy just to have suddenly realized that whatever the fuck she was up to it was it was happening right in the middle of of every you know the main action of the show and it just brought all of our characters together effectively are going to be impacted by this obviously we haven't seen a Vassarala's reaction we haven't seen Bobby's reaction that would be really useful to see because obviously they are two big allies of James Holden and I can't imagine they're going to believe for one second that Jim was in any way involved in this so they are going to know probably in their bones that we have got a serious issue here somebody somewhere is fucking about I still have the same feeling I did earlier which I think the entire documentary set up was designed with the purpose of accessing the ship getting the footage of Holden and getting that message out so that it looked as if it was sent by the Rosinante crew rather than that fucking weird creepy guy who's the the cat i really don't like him he actually makes me feel ugh, i get like this you know the heebie-jeebies so i need him dead he's he's now on my i need to see him die list preferably at the hands of amos uh if i'm honest what a prick it was just such a horrible setup you know as i said in the at the end of the last episode it was so awful it actually made me feel physically nauseous that feeling of having been completely set up having done absolutely nothing wrong and fucked but behind that we also have the very interesting breakthrough that the proto molecule is clearly communicating and it chose to communicate to Jim through recreating the consciousness of Miller. Again, this is all just me speculating because we haven't had the actual science technology explanation for this yet. But so when I'm describing it, it's not because I think that's actually what happened. It's just the only words I can find that map what my experience was of, of kind of Miller's return. And obviously I should say as well I haven't edited so normally when I'm doing the introduction to a new video I've edited the last video and obviously that's not happened here I've just rolled straight on so there may well be things that I see when I'm doing the edit that I'm not aware of yet so in which case editor script tonight will be making little notes along the bottom of the screen and giving you inserts and all of that sort of stuff to to just sort of make sure that what you're seeing is actually where I'm at with the show now versus where I'm at at this point which is now the past I also wondered what was happening with time or space time I guess at the end of the last episode because it looked like 
their perception of, t of time has slowed down. So like the missile was suddenly moving really slowly and the race Nante was moving really slowly or time had just stopped. Everything had just frozen in the vicinity of the ring. And I'm not, I'm not yet clear on what's happened. It may well be in the rewatch that that's cleared up for me, but I literally haven't even gone back and rewatched the end of the episode again. I've just left my knowledge as it, as it stood with my immediate reaction on seeing it first time. But I love that episode. I think that's going to be one of those episodes I absolutely never forget. I'll remember the number, the title. It is. It will just stick with me because it was felt like a real gut punch and a hard swerve. And people had to make awful decisions. And I don't think that Naomi is going to be very forgiving of Kamina in this situation. Because as much as she is a belter, she also loves Jim. And... As I said last time, I don't think Kamina made her decision because she actually believed that the Rosinante crew were terrorists trying to set up the OPA. I really don't actually think that. I'm happy to be proven wrong, but I don't think that. I think it was a much more strategic decision and I don't make light of the weight of that strategic decision because she had a choice to make inside a minute, which was take out the Rosinante or face an entire UN fleet and probably the Martians too, make potentially obliterating the behemoth, which effectively would kill a significant amount of the Belter population and effectively end their attempts at civil at actually creating a civilization. So I when I'm saying she made a strategic decision, I I don't say it lightly, I get that it's it's a different motivation but it's no less serious a motivation than say Naomi attempting to protect the race and take crew because you know there are people that she loves and people that she feels affinity to and it's absolutely the same for Kamina um, with her people so yeah it's this is going to be a very very interesting one as I say I really want to see a Vassarala I miss a Vassarala I want to see Bobby I miss Bobby hopefully we can get them back um, into the show in a in a more real way but I missed them a lot less last episode than I had previously because that shit got real um, I don't like Melba that's I'll tell you that now I don't like her at all for many reasons I don't like what she did I don't like that she doesn't like Jim and I don't like that she's just constantly going around crying and shaking I just ugh. I don't like it. If you're going to be an asshole, you know, go for it. But don't, don't have these self-pity tears all the time. If she'd been forced into this and it was against her will and maybe what we're seeing with the upset is her having some sort of a moral struggle with what she's doing, then I'll probably feel really, really bad about all of my negative thoughts about Melba. But I don't have that information to go on yet. So on face value, twat. No, she did. Oh, yes, she did. No, she did. Yes, she did. No, she did. Yes, she did, Peter. I just saw it. All right, take it easy. I'm interested to see actually what happens with her and Pastor Anna because Anna's pretty on the ball and I think she reads people quite well now, having been so burned by Esteban. So I think it's possible that maybe she could get under Melba's skin a little bit and figure out something's going on with her, but we will we will find that out. And again, we've we've had not very much from Mars recently. We haven't really gone back to Earth. And I guess at this point, I'm hoping that this episode is going to pick up where we left off, and that everyone we get everyone's reaction to what actually happened with the Rosinante in the ring, and actually find out what did happen with the Rosinante in the ring because they gave us a proper cliffhanger that episode and the show doesn't often do that where it actually cuts off without giving you any explanation of what just happened. So yes, I think that's that's enough introducing from me. Without further ado, let's have at it. That previously on just got me. Run the backscatter through again. The torpedo detonated, we should have seen an explosion. Gotta, what are you doing? I want you. I don't work for you. And I don't work for Anderson Dawes. I gave the order to fire. You know we had to do it. 
if we hadn't. The Innes would if have... If you've killed them... Hate me later. Work now. God, I'd have trouble with that. I would have trouble. I'm sorry. If I killed them, I'm... I'm sorry. I was right there, wasn't I? I don't want a cookie, da da. What? That torpedo engine, it's burning like crazy, but it's not gaining, but that thing should have rammed itself up our tailpipe by now. And apparently, the rules ain't the rules around here. Maybe the torpedo was going too fast. And when I kept saying we had to slow down. It's like that slingshot asshole. Hold on a second. You're saying that yeah. if things go too fast around here, something gets nervous and grabs them? That ain't natural. I don't see any stars. I love this. I love this. Oh, you. Correction, that, that torpedo is moving. It's slow, but it's definitely moving. How long before it hits us? It's not even heading towards us anymore. Oh. Joe Miller, the guy who died on Venus? Maybe he isn't exactly dead. Maybe he isn't exactly Miller. What? I don't want to get into anyone's firing range until we can explain that that message was fake. The message came from here. OK, do we have any thoughts on how that happened? Other than then, something compromised our ship. No, I got nothing. That is our first priority. We have to make sure that... Yes! Thank you. Hey, what did you do? Amos? That fake message was somebody trying to kill us. Didn't do anything. Yes, he fucking did. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't know. It was just supposed to be a back door so we could get nav and comm logs, background information, stuff you might not tell us. Shit, you could have gotten off killed! I didn't know it was anything weird. Hey, hey, we got something coming through the ring. It's small. What the fuck is going on? It looks like a probe. Backing out. That's it. How would I? What? Something else is coming through. <gasps> Looks like the Shusen. Oh shit! Hey, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> so what's all the ruckus? Oh man. Are they healing us? Comms are dead. There's no way to tell. <sighs> they target locked us. That could just be their way of saying stop. You're gonna tell me everything I need to know to unscrew this ship. I'm telling you, I don't know what I did. Let's see if I can get some inside. Fucking idiot. I ain't trust him as far as I could throw him. Miller. Miller. Such a great face. Miller! <sighs> what a star. I am immediately recalling all civilian presence from the UN mission. Damn it. Where's Rain? Pretty sure he was on the Sun Moon. Shit. I didn't know that. Mm hmm We should probably clean out his locker before we go. For his family. Yeah. Okay. I understand the evacuation. I do. It's just it's so frustrating. I wish we could stay on board. I feel the same. To come so close and be turned aside. <laughs> if only there were a way. Oh shit! You don't plan to join us? That would be telling. I'm starting to wonder if she's even here. It'd be just like her to ditch her own party. <laughs> Wait. I'm not asking for your permission. You are oh, I knew it. I just got that moments before. We both do this later, please. I'm not going to allow any daughter of mine to go whoring around whoring? the belt. Is that what you think I am? Ridiculous. <gasps> I always listen to you. He does. You are so ungrateful. You're small-minded, and spoiled, and stupid. Forget you! Forget you. 
look at you. Oh, Everything you do is corrupt and I can't stand to be part of it. I'm done. Julie. We'll pick up next year once your uh, sister comes to her senses. I could take over for her. Don't be absurd. Yeah. Balls. Fuck. Oh, God. So she's, what was the name? We know her name because they've used it in the past. She's the daughter that they say Jules Pierre adores. It was something like Clarissa or. Oh, yes. It's not fucking Melba. That's the point that she's made up a name. And now that woman is going to know her if she sees her. So she's going to bite to have a problem if she can't get out of the way quickly enough. But she is Julie Mao's sister. And it looks like, despite or possibly even because of the way that Julie asserted her independence from her father, she was probably his favourite, actually. Um, I think he at least respected her more than fake Melba. So is this vengeance for them taking out her dad? Is that her motivation? Never mind that they saved her sister. Never mind that her dad basically killed her sister. Is her motivation that she has got a vendetta against Jim? That would make sense in that she's kind of grasping for her father's approval and this would be one way that she could maybe get the respect and esteem from him that she feels that she didn't have but that Julie did. I think she's trying to be a warrior and prove herself somehow. That just makes me hate her even more. I am strong, strong. I am invincible, invincible. I am one. <sighs> I'm so sorry if I'm supposed to fall in love with this character at some point, but hey, I got there with Alex, didn't I? I want this woman dealt with, but probably won't happen yet. Play. Yeah, go on, scuttle off. Whoa. I didn't know it would do anything like this. Who was your contact? I never met them. Try again. I don't know. Don't believe you. But will this help? Will this help you fix the comms? Damn if I know, that's a Naomi thing. Can we get her back, please? All right. I'll take it from here. Ah! Oh! Oh! <gasps> oh, shit! I'm gonna ask you this once, and then I'm gonna kill her. How do I fix my ship? Answer me! He does fucking know, doesn't he? Oh! oh! How fast was it going when it got stopped? Just over 18,000 kph. Okay. Okay, so now we have a speed limit. Yeah, and the Shizen is accelerating to match, which incidentally is more than we are doing, so yeah. They're... I gotta catch up. That other probe. It's not going through the ring. It's heading towards the bubble. Lost that second probe. It went back out of the ring? No. Blinked out of existence. What the fuck is happening? Well, we should probably keep away from the edges then. Yeah, there's a good safety tip. Oh my god! We, um, uh, we turn and the MCRN catches us and uh, we go straight and we're gonna reach the other side of that bubble. We have until then to figure out another option. Oh my god. This is just the fucking best, isn't it? The MCRN Shusen is on the other side in pursuit of the Rosinante and will apprehend. We strongly advise against anyone going through the ring until we have fully assessed the situation. MCRN out. Oh, it's like a red rag football, isn't it? Ashford's like... Hey, 
is all a chief engineer. I hope our chief engineer is on a skiff about to go into that bubble. Checking up on me? Yeah, that too. Your friend survived. What? Yeah, well, I seem to anyway. The MCRM poked their head back out to tell us all that they get to arrest Holden, that we should just sit on our hands while they do it. We're going through. We didn't come all the way out here to be told to stay in our place. I knew it! The way you outgrew your ship. But then something happens, doesn't it? Hmm? Makes us forget. Remember only the good times? And we start thinking, oh, maybe we can get them back. Be who we used to be. You let nostalgia trick you, and you'll regret it badly. your old crew for a reason. I left the OPA long before I left the Rossi. And now you're back here with us and we need you here. I'll fix the ship. <sighs> fix that ship, Naomi, and then get back to the Rossi, please.